Mark is from St. Catharines, uh, but works here in Kitchener, and Liz is Kitchener born and raised. They bought this house when their son was just under one year old, and when we did this renovation, he kind of grew up, and now he's four. This home is a 1930s century home, and as you may imagine, <laughs> they're really dark and dreary. There were a lot of browns and taupes and tans, and there were French doors on all of the doorways, so everything was really dark and kind of closed off. We wanted something that was sort of dramatic when you walk in, but not over the top. So the floors are nice geometric porcelain cement look tile. We didn't want to go with an actual cement tile because it's really difficult to maintain. One of the things that we did in the front hall, there was a window inside of the closet, and so we wanted to expose that window because it was so dark. So we took the closet out and put in a custom bench and exposed all kinds of light in the space, which was really great. The living room was pretty much an extension of the dining room, so lots of those darker colors and not bright at all. The windows that you see here were hidden behind drywall, so we exposed the windows, painted the fireplace, and just brightened everything up, and then all new furniture and paint colors. We chose to keep the arches between the dining room and the living room because it's just such a beautiful, original piece of the home. While we modernized the home, we didn't want to strip it of all of its character, so we wanted to keep those elements. We carried the aesthetic all the way through, really through the whole house. When they moved here, they were downsizing from this 2,400 square foot house and they had large furniture. So we got rid of that and <laughs> decided that we needed to lighten things up. We did keep the dining room table, but we got new chairs and we just needed to freshen up the whole space. Removing the wall between the kitchen and the dining room was the number one goal of the project. The kitchen was a galley-style kitchen. Not very inviting, not very functional, uh, really dark space. We could have done a galley kitchen, but it would have been too small. There was just too much to pack into that small of a space, so we did a number of different layouts, but finally landed on the current one and just re-laid out the entire space. We really wanted to bring in just a little bit more of a dynamic look instead of just doing the classic white kitchen. So we went with the deep navy blue lowers just to make it look a little more interesting. And then set against the brass hardware, it looks really quite sharp. And then keeping it fresh with the same color on the uppers as we did throughout the house on the walls. The dining room and kitchen feel like one unit almost, especially given that the cabinetry colors are reflected in that dining hutch. It's striking as soon as you walk in the front door, you can see those beautiful pendants and the nice island. It's really functional for their family. With their little guy, he's always sitting at the island and playing Lego and eating breakfast. And yeah, it's a, it's a really nice hub of the home. The den used to be a garage. This is a couple of owners before Mark and Liz moved here. When we came into the project, it was a freezing cold ice box, basically. We removed a fireplace that was in there because it was not attractive and it didn't really do its job. And we heated the floors so that it would be nice and toasty and warm in there because that's their hangout space, that's the family rec room. We tried to keep things, again, really nice and clean and fresh, but nice and modern as well. Everything's very organic and natural, wool area rugs and woven fabrics. There's lots of family pictures and a gallery wall, and the map that's broken up into pieces on the end wall is really special to them. The master bedroom was a beautiful space. It did feel a little bit crammed because there was a closet that was enclosing your view to the windows. We removed the closet, we painted the walls white and did lots of white bedding and textures and kept things really light and airy. Black lamps just to create a little bit of drama on that wall and just easy breezy white draperies just to keep it really flowy. The bathroom was a big challenge. It was very small. It's the main bathroom in the house. Mark and Liz really wanted to have a separate shower from their bathtub. We were able to steal a nice closet that was in their son's bedroom. And fortunately, there's two closets in there, so we stole that closet and made that into a combination bathtub, shower, wet room. So it worked out really well. Yeah, there was a window in the closet. It was a walk-in kind of closet. Um, but yes, another window in a closet. <laughs> But I wanted to bring in a little bit of dynamic shapes and different kind of tile installs as well. So we went with the hex tile on the floor and the herringbone 3x6 subway tile in the bath and shower room and went with a really nice dark black vanity with brass hardware. 
My favorite thing is to do a full project, start to finish and gutting a whole house. I think everyone would probably feel that way, but it really means that we can create a story through all of the design, through the downstairs, the kitchen, and all the way up to the bedroom and bathroom. I think my clients are really happy. Um, they often will call me and text me just to make one little decision because we've worked together through everything and we've created a real friendship and it's been a great job.